One of the most volatile questions of our time is the question of whether change of sexual orientation is possible. And so the book reports a scientific study looking at a group of about a hundred individuals who set out to attempt to change their sexual orientation through a religious ministry. So we follow these people looking particularly at the question of whether change is possible and whether it's harmful to actually attempt to change one's sexual orientation. Let me just quote quickly from uh, the website of the American Psychiatric Association where they state, there is no published scientific evidence supporting the efficacy of reparative therapy as a treatment to change one's sexual orientation. And then they go on to say the potential risks of reparative therapy are great, including depression, anxiety, and self-destructive behavior. The American Psychological Association is even more forceful on their website, saying, and they say flat out that sexual orientation is impossible to change. And this is uh, creeping into the public consciousness uh, in news programs and uh, newspaper articles and so forth and so on. There's been a lot of research on this question of whether change of sexual orientation is possible. Uh, and that research often met the research standards of the time, but, but didn't meet what we regard to be high, rigorous standards today. So we aimed at doing a study that would meet those rigorous standards, and there's three main characteristics that I would point to. First of all, a good study is going to be longitudinal in nature. An awful lot of the research out there is really essentially a snapshot at one moment in time. And oftentimes that snapshot is looking back where people are remembering uh, their, uh, you know, how they were in the past and then, then describing how they are now. So it's very important first that a, that a high quality study be longitudinal. And the long, longitudinal simply means you follow people over a significant amount of time. This study does that. Second characteristic is that it be prospective. Again, rather than looking back in time, as I was saying earlier, we should pick up as early in the change process as possible and follow these people over time. In that way you, in that way you avoid being a, a success cases only study. You're looking for successes and failures and you're tracking them from the beginning and thus getting a more honest uh, picture of, uh, of how likely change is and what the change process is like. And then thirdly, an awful lot of research in this area uses uh, idiosyncratic uh, measures of change. They make up their own questions. And so what we did was we, we delved into this research literature and tried to pull out the best standardized questions and survey instruments about sexual orientation and about harm in order that, uh, that our findings be comparable to other research that's out there in the area. So for instance, uh, quite a number of the uh, survey instruments that we used have, are instruments that have been published in the Journal of Homosexuality, which is the most respected scholarly journal in the gay and lesbian field, gay and lesbian studies field. I was trained as a clinical psychologist in a doctoral program that aimed at developing scientist practitioners, people who were committed to uh, following the empirical research in the direction that it led. And uh, so I was trained in how to do such research. I've published in mainstream uh, empirical journals in my field. And uh, so I have a commitment to those kinds of standards. Mark Yarhouse is a former student and now colleague, someone who, can, who also has published in the, the best professional journals in the field um, and has done empirical research that I think is as uh, uh, above criticism in terms of its fairness and its willingness to look at what the evidence shows. So our commitment as we entered this study was uh, a commitment to following the data wherever it took us. In fact, part of what we included in the instructions to the study uh, and even in our uh, initial approach to the religious ministries that gave us research subjects to look at for this study was that we're committed above all else to following the truth. We believe that God is honored by the truth and God is dishonored by any dishonest or in a, a biased approach to uh, what, what we find. We want this book to be accessible to as wide a range uh, of readers as possible. Uh, the book delves into deep subjects, uh, s subjects like philosophy of science and ethics and conceptualization of sexual orientation and research methodology. But always we were writing for an intelligent layperson trying to explain these issues because the, the intelligent layperson is hearing a lot of things about what the science says. 
but oftentimes no one unpacks what those studies really show or unpacks why this issue or that issue is important. So even though we're reporting a scientific study, the very reason why we tried to do it in a, in a book form like this is to help that intelligent reader to simply understand what the issues are and to lay them out as honestly as possible so that the reader can make up their minds for themselves.